Hi there, thanks for checking out our repair channel. Um, this is going to be kind of a, oh, a show and tell of this particular unit. Um, we've already repaired the thing. It took a lot of work to get it done right. Uh, this has been worked on by somebody else in the past and uh, they didn't quite do it just right. So we had to kind of go through and fix their stuff a little bit and fix things that they, that they didn't uh, test and didn't know it was bad. So it just took a lot of trial and error to get it right, but uh, we got it, got it going. Um, this is, if this is your first time checking out our channel, uh, we've got over 350 videos on YouTube of uh, units that we've fixed. Uh, we've got some how-to videos of how to fix things. Um, we got show and tell videos like this one kind of is where it talks about the unit and how it works on the inside and stuff. Uh, we, we've got some other videos of some reviews on some stuff, uh, you know, some good ones and bad ones of brands that are out there. Um, but if you uh, have never checked out our channel, this is the first time, hit that subscribe button and, and uh, hit the like button if you'd like to as well. Um, you can go to our website, uh, which is fencerfixer.com. Fencer and Fixer are both spelled with an F as in Frank. And uh, there's a link down in the description area that you can click on. Uh, we also work on cattle scales and low bars and stuff for weighing livestock. Uh, we've got a website for that as well. Uh, it's called uh, cattlescalerepair.com. There's a link down in the description area as well that you can click on. Uh, we work on a lot of different brands of scales and low bars and things for livestock uh, weighing and everything. But um, check out that website as well and tell your friends about us. Um, anyways, this is a particular unit, a five shock X XP-15, it's a low impedance unit. It hadn't been made in a number of years, but this is a kind of an old school, good, good working unit, a good running unit when it does work. It's, I think it's a 15 joule unit, uh, if I had to take a guess based on that, uh, being 15 joule. It puts out a hell of a snap to the terminals. Um, it's old school, like I said, they don't make it anymore, but we'll take it apart and show you what it looks like on the inside and just kind of talk about it and everything. Um, but real quick, I'll, I'll show you on the front here as a green lens and a clear lens. The green lens is going to glow green. It's just kind of a power light. Hey, tells you the unit's powered up, turned on. It's a neon bulb. This, uh, you know, a light bulb over here for flash, kind of a red orange color. This is your kind of out, like I said, output indicator lamp which means every time the light's flashing, that should mean that the unit's working. And it should flash with every click that the unit pulses. And if you get a short on the fence, this the unit will still click, but this light will go out to you, hey, you got a problem. And if you're not sure if this um, unit, if the unit in general has a problem or not, just unhook your fence and ground front, plug it back in, and if the light goes back to flashing, typically means you got a bad short somewhere on the fence or something that's dogging it down bad enough that it can't produce enough charge to make the light flash and run your fence. So we'll plug it in and show you those lights real quick and then we'll open it up and show you the inside. So I'm gonna, it's an AC model, 110, 120 volt. See a little green light there, power's on. And a little red light over here flashing every time it clicks. Turn it off real quick, you kind of see that green light go out now. Take the cover off real quick. Now this is the uh, you know basic inside of the thing. Uh, you get your main input board over here has a bunch of capacitors on there to kind of build the charge up gradually through. The, they call that on this particular model they call it the multiplier circuit. Basically, all these little b big black things on here. Turn the light on so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. All those big black square rectangular things on the board here are capacitors. And it gradually builds a charge up through all of them. And then it gets over here to these two bigger capacitors. And it charges it up to about five, six, eight hundred volts DC. You know, it's AC coming in, it gets to here. By the time it gets over here, it's in, it's in DC voltage. And then um, there's a timing mechanism here, along with some other gadgets. On the board, um, but anyways, when it, do, it does all this crap within about a second or so, you know, within every time the unit clicks, in between that clicking time is when this thing's charging up. So it does all this 
timing and charging, discharging in about a second or two. So it does it really quick. But when it gets to that certain level, this unit will tell this piece here, timed with the timing circuit, will trigger and fire these capacitors over here. And coming out of those capacitors uh, are, are these two big wires here, which go to the transformer, which is this big piece here. It's the primary side. And they come out of that transformer with the two output wires that go to this output board, which ties into your uh, fence and ground terminals over here. And this actually has a full power ground and like a reduced or half power. The, um, the How it gets to that half power the deal is through this big resistor here. This kind of loads the power coming out of this through that big resistor and lowers it by the time it comes over here. So I had a third terminal if you wanted to use it. But uh, when it takes that five, six, eight hundred volts DC here, it comes into these to these big wires here, and that changes it from say eight hundred volts DC high amperage to a high voltage low amperage DC output. So say eight hundred volts in, which they vary between five hundred, four hundred, three hundred and fifty to four hundred on the low side, maybe up to seven, eight hundred volts on the higher side, depending on the brand, the model, and all that stuff. Then the transformer takes that and turns it to like 8,000 volts or 10,000 volts, whatever uh, DC out uh, to here. And this actually, this little board here will actually lower the voltage coming out. It's kind of a lightning protection board as well. If you look at the board, it has these uh, little deals here and some resistor things on there. That's to help for the lightning transit voltages coming in on the fence and ground side. So this actually lowers the voltage out of it. And if you're curious about these boards and why they do that, or, or what they are. If you, if you look like the Zariba or American Farm Works or Blitzer, 100 mile, 120 mile, or 200 and 240 mile units, they'll have the storm guard things in the front. That's basically what this thing is here. It's just there for protection, hopefully, to save the rest of the unit this direction when lightning comes in on the fence side and needs to go to the ground side. So, um, that's the gist of it. Most energizers, fencers, fence charger, whatever you want to call them, a lot of them run like that. That's how they work. A lot of them don't have this thing in it, but a lot of them have a board, uh, either a multiplier circuit or some kind of little input transformer that builds a charge up to like 350, 500 volts, whatever, um, to a capacitor. What's one little bitty capacitor or a bunch of big ones, a bunch of medium-sized ones, and uh, fires it through a, an SCR, you know, some kind of triggering device of some sort, and fires into a transformer, an output transformer, spikes it up, spits it to the terminals. All the um, clicking type units, whether solid state or a um, low impedance unit, they all do it that in that general idea. This people different different brands do it different ways. So. Um, but it's a good working unit. We went through it and got it going. We had to fix portions of the board and replace this uh, big capacitor here that was bad. That was the biggest fault with it. The guy said it would work to a point, but give it a day, and it would just shut off. And uh, there were some weak points in the board. Uh, someone had kind of fiddle farted around with the board but didn't quite get it right. So we replaced a couple, some parts in the board. And then replace this uh, capacitor. And to get that capacitor out looks simple, but man, it is a pain in the neck. Because this piece here is this uh, black case here. There's about four or five screws, no, or six screws to hold it down. And then you have to loosen this board up, loosen this board up, pull the boards up. And this whole piece comes out as one big contraption and there's uh, these are stud mount capacitors they got a stud on them with a nut on the bottom side but to get the this whole contraption out is a nightmare to get out and a nightmare to get back in because you got these pieces down here and uh, one over here as well they you can't just lift straight up and it doesn't really want to move left or right because uh, it hits these uh, little tubes here that have the light bulbs in them and it is just a nightmare to get out. I, I can kind of understand why they probably stopped manufacturing this unit. Uh, just because probably from a uh, manufacturing to put it together and probably for a repair standpoint, it's probably a pain in the neck. 
but these things usually run and run and run. These were old, older, older models that back when Fishok and Zareba and all that stuff was still really good and really well built. Uh, and other stuff nowadays is kind of a cheap crap unit kind of thing. Um, but if you got one of these old style units, I mean, these are still really well built units and uh, they can be fixed. They're not throwaway deals. And to replace it, I wouldn't replace it with like a 15 joule, like 200 miles Zareba unit because that's not even in the same uh, level of reliability as um, this unit is. This is back, like I said, when they're still well built. Um, I would look at like a Cyclops or a Gallagher uh, type unit nowadays. And a Cyclops of this power would be like a Cyclops Brute or a Cyclops Super. And those are 320 some dollars or 350 for a Cyclops Brute. And a Cyclops Super is probably pushing like 400 bucks, give or take. So, you know, you'd spend quite a bit of money to get a quality unit in the same uh, quality of build and longevity as one of these older models are like this one. If you stick with a Zariba 200 mile type unit, you're going to spend about 300 bucks. But if I'd take 300 bucks and buy a better brand versus something like um, the the Zariba stuff is. But this is an old school unit. They're really well built. They use big components, um, well thought out boards, uh, the good quality parts on there, good uh, beefy heavy duty transformers in them. Uh, they don't make transformers for the Zareba stuff like this anymore. So they, uh, and this I think is original transformer to it. And this thing is probably 20 plus years old and transformer is still good. Newer Zareba Blitzer, 100, you know, 100, 200 mile type units that Zareba and those guys make. Man, you are lucky if you get a, a year, give or take, or up to five years out of one. It's very uh, rare to get one to last much more than that. Uh, you're lucky if you get a transformer out of a 100, 200 mile unit to run that long on a Zareba American Farm Works type of unit. Um, they're kind of a really horrible unit in general. But um, anyways, um, hopefully you like this video. Um, ask us questions. Uh, we give free quotes on everything that comes into us for repair. We work on about any brand you can think of. And we give free quotes and 18-month repair warranties and everything that we work on. So, you know, saying probably 20-plus years old, 15-plus years old probably at least, I um, mean 25-plus years old. This repair on the board and that capacitor have a year-and-a-half warranty on it, uh, including the labor. Uh, Lightning is part of that warranty. So, if for some reason, it goes bad from malfunction or lightning gets a hold of it uh we'll repair it at no charge unless it's something else that went wrong you know this trend happens to go bad or this board gets hit goes bad or the pastor of here the little one goes bad you don't want to treat it as a new new repair kind of thing but we always test all that stuff before we ever before it ever leaves our shop so uh, this pastor i don't know if it's original or not but it's perfectly fine it reads like 9.8 out of 10 on the reading so there's it's well within specs um and if for some reason this board got obliterated by lightning and you can't really get new boards for them sometimes we can fix the boards it depends how far gone they are but say worst case is the board's trash and we can't fix the board and it's within that year and a half warranty we'll just cut you a check for the repair of the thing mail that to you and you know we'll just cut our losses on it and uh, this will basically be a parts unit or something, you know. And then, but at least you won't be out any money. We'll, re we'll reimburse you for the parts, labor, freight that your original invoice was for, and cut you a check for that kind of thing. But that doesn't happen very often. That's pretty rare where we can't repair a uh, unit, or if we got a um, uh, a warranty repair in from what that's one of our personal repair warranties. Uh, which doesn't happen that often, but occasionally it does because lightning gets things all the time. So, but we're pretty good and work with people pretty well and stuff. We're not too hard to, diff we're not too difficult to work with. We're just like anybody else. We want to be treated right. We're a mom and pop shop, so we're pretty down to earth people. Uh, so, but if you got a unit like this needs worked on, give us a shot. Be happy to take a look at something. But until we do another repair on how one works, or how to fix one.
we will see you guys later. We'll do a real quick test for you. Push that back a little bit so I can get to the terminals here. Put that in the, in the frame here. I'm going to go fence to ground. 9.3 kV, so just a tad over 9,000 volts out of it. And if you're curious about the reduced or half power, it puts out about the same amount of voltage, but the joules and shock power is reduced because of that big resistor right there. But you look over here, 9.4, you know, so about the same kind of voltage, but if you look at the shock it does, we'll do ground to, to full power spark. And then we'll go ground to reduce power. And if you could even see that, tuck this unit up on its on its end right here. Well, we're gonna go ground to full power. That should kind of weld the stupid screwdriver to the thing. And we'll do ground to reduce power. A lot smaller spark. Go back here. A lot bigger spark. But anyways, until we do another video how to work on one or whatever, uh, we'll see you guys later. But remember to subscribe to the channel. There's a link down in the description area to our websites and stuff. Our email address, I think, is down there too. Also, our Facebook page. We, we have, if you search on Facebook, Fencer Fixer, you'll find us. Uh, but anyways, until next time, we'll see you later.